In this last section in our Taylor series, actually series in general, well, you know, it's the last one that a lot of books include. It goes on. There's lots more to these series, but when you're in a Calc 2 class, then this is usually where they end the application of Taylor and McLaurin series. Maybe you get to go on. Let me go on to other kind of series, but here we're going to round it out. Yes, this is, it just looked like pie to me. I don't know. We want applications of Taylor series. Now, the first normal place where this application takes place is evaluating limits. Why not take it right back to the beginning of calculus and use this middle of calculus to find the limits? Now, I know some of y'all are looking like, why can't we just directly evaluate? Turns out that looks like it's a zero over zero. Same thing down here and same thing down here. So you're like, can I loop it? Oh, I guess maybe, but we have this new tool and you know, it's like a screwdriver. You got a new tool, you just want to use it. So what? <clears throat> we expand out the series for that. You see some canceling, some other things cancel, and then you'll be able to directly evaluate it. Turns out same thing down here. I saw the sign. Well, we just saw the McLaurin series for the sign. We'll use the McLaurin because we're, we're, we're concerned where the X's are zeros and that's where the McLaurin is centered. Had you been far off some other place, probably um, it's an expansion on the beginner topics in Calc 2. If you push that series out and you're trying to evaluate there, then you'd be all tailored. I know. <laughs> Let's whiz through this next one. <clears throat> can I? Yeah, I can have two series for this E. Ooh, we saw the McLaurin series for that. We'll use McLaurin because we're about zero, or at least we're concerned with that part. You expand those out. You notice a lot of things are going to cancel out. Then you can evaluate the limit directly, directly and it works out. Oh man, another thing that you might want to use series for, now on that one, you could use L'Hopital's on some of those, and um, this one, yeah, you kinda actually need it. Cause I'm over here. Whoa, the transcendental, what? You looked that up and it doesn't make any sense. Well, what does it mean? It doesn't have a nice antiderivative. I know, huh? You don't, if you try to make a U sub, you try to make a by part, you try to make a, all of this is all in the playlist that is attached to the back of this. The playlist is free. There's nothing in there. It's not like something that you get there and then they charge you for it. No, it's just examples worked out that I used to do in class. Well, I probably still will, but now class is here in the air. So what? Now here we can integrate these. Well, approximate the integrals. They don't have nice antiderivatives. <clears throat> but what you can do is you can expand it out with a polynomial. Polynomial. I know, when you were doing derivatives and antiderivatives, polynomial was that, that was the honeypot. That was like the one that you got. So what now? You can take this, make it a polynomial, making it, making it easy easy on you. Then you integrate that polynomial term to term, fundamental theorem of calculus, upper minus lower, and you're all good. Do the same thing down here. That doesn't have a nice antiderivative, but it has a really nice polynomial that approximates it. So you can use that approximation and you can find that, but you might want to also notice that one's even so you can double up. Oh boy, get back to it. Look back at it, oh man. Oh man, there you are. Another example or application is roots, roots, roots. Some of y'all want to evaluate roots. Somebody hit me up. I posted a video on calc and, um, and Tish, he was like, could you do a video on CERD? And I thought that was absurd. I was like, huh? What is that even? So then I looked it up and turns out, Surd, surd, surd. Surd is a word, a word, a surd, surd, surd. Surd is a word. Yeah, I know. I didn't know, but I do know now. I know. I've been doing this 20 years, and that's the first time I've heard surd. 
I guess it's evaluating roots. Mm -hmm. Ones that aren't nice, like this one. So here you go, Antish. We can do third, not in post, whatever that I heard is. It's um, approximating roots, yeah, that aren't nice, maybe irrational. So I can approximate the roots of this using binomial series. That's right. You know what? Your calculator <coughs> doesn't actually know what that is. No. All your calculator knows is some algorithm that breaks it up into addition because that's all your calculator can do. And that's all we're doing here. We're taking these functions and we're representing them as repeated addition. I know! And in a lot of those cases, the first four terms is fine. If it's not, then shift it. And then you can use the first four terms. If you shift it, that's tailored. Anyway, we're tailored. Oh, man, do you think it's really like you take your series and then you tailor it for the interval that you're looking for? No, is an actual guy. Now look at this guy. All right, so... All right, yeah, you're here. Um, if you want to use the first four terms of a binomial series to approximate um, this value using that series, well, what do you first need to do? You need to rec recognize that that minus is the flip, all right, and the square of this is that, okay, and the sum of this is that, then you can fit the series for this where your x is punto uno. Be careful, really, be careful with that punto. So so what? You think it's absurd? I think it might be absurd. We can use the first four terms of this series. That's right. Take the derivative. That's the easy way to do the binomial. There are some ways where you can fit a form, but you try to use those. You're probably just going to get confused and you'll be done doing the derivatives and evaluating those by the time you ever figure out how to use the form for binomial series. So, I mean, it's really not that bad, but... <laughs> crank out the first four terms. Notice now that when you're trying to approximate this, it can be written as one plus this. So you can use the first four terms of the binomial expansion of that where your x is um, point, um, don't say, don't say, 12, point 12. Yeah, and um, that's pretty close to zero. So I guess we noticed that we can also, turns out your calculator doesn't have a list of all of the logarithms in the entire world. It doesn't. It doesn't have the list of all the trig functions in the entire world. It doesn't. It doesn't have a list of all of the cosine, sines, tangents, cosecants, secants, cotangents, hyperbolic, everything's logarithm everything logarithm all the different space log base 2 log base 3 log base 4 log base 5 log base 6 log base whatever it doesn't have those all hardwired in some freaking database all it has is some kind of series representation behind it because all your calculator can do is add doesn't it also subtract it adds negative numbers so what does it do? It has an algorithm. Some of the crude older algorithms like these, I know there are more better ones, but what? We're using Taylor and McLaurin. So we're approximating that and we're gonna crank out the first four terms. Oh, this one we should probably shift, but maybe you're not so shifty. You wanna use it right there? That's fine, whatever. Crank out the first four terms, evaluate it, and that's that. All of these are worked out in that playlist. Now it's time for you to hit it and watch them in order.